Hello everyone, welcome back to A Couple Books. This is Couple, as per usual. I might be holding three books in my hands, but today we're talking about dogs and wolves. So, as you guys probably know, there are usually animal companions or animal creatures or just creatures in general in fantasy worlds. Uh, even in urban fantasies, you tend to get some kind of dog companion or some of the sort. Of course, there's Game of Thrones, Dire Wolves, and there's a whole bunch of other companion creatures such as in the Golden Compass series by Philip Pullman. But today, I wanna to talk to you about my top three favorite wolves slash dogs that are companions in these one, two, three books and fourth book. Uh, the books today that I will be referencing in terms of the dogs and wolves that I'll be talking about is Stormfront's The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher, The Queen of Blood series by Sarah Beth Durst, and the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb, and the Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. So each of these series, the main character or main characters usually have a companion that's going to accompany them through the journey. So I'm not sure if you guys saw, but I have three dogs back at home. So my life is filled with dog companions and I love it. So I love it when my favorite characters have dogs as well. So today we are just going to talk about a few of these, a few of these dogs and we are then going to rank them so that you guys know back home, which dog is the best dog in the fantasy world. The first dog we're going to talk about today is in the Dresden Files, which is Mouse. Mouse is a Tibetan Mastiff. Some would say he's an other sort of species, uh, another sort of breed, but he is a pretty massive dog, like far bigger than normal. And Mouse is extremely intelligent. So while he doesn't communicate verbally or in the minds, as you'll see with some of the other dogs, this dog is extremely intelligent. And we don't really know exactly what the origin story of Mouse is, except that he came from um, this temple and we see this dog get rescued by Harry Dresden in book six, I do believe, and the dog is raised with Harry and he is n referred to as a temple dog occasionally throughout the series. Several bad guys and main characters, but to avoid spoilers, I'm gonna try and keep this as safe as possible for y'all. Um, this dog will be feared by some pretty big monsters out there that Dresden has to deal with. In addition to that, he has put down friend and foe occasionally. Um, there's been examples where Thomas has gone off and started fighting one another, another character and Mouse is able to swiftly put down him. And we're talking about a vampire, you know? And if you guys have read the Dresden Files, that is really seriously no joke that Mouse is able to do that quite so easily. Part of the reason I love Mouse is that not only is he just the best guardian dog ever, and who he, who he eventually becomes the guardian for, I'm not gonna tell you for spoiler's sake, but it's the cutest relationship ever. And I love how Mouse has this kind of paternal instinct as well as a guardian instinct with his charge later on in the series. And he just is such a fun character to have around. And even though he doesn't necessarily add any comedic dialogue, just his presence alone can sometimes be hilarious with how he positions himself and his behavior in general is just quite funny. Um, so Mouse from The Dressin Files is for sure a contender in this um, race to figure out who my favorite dog is. The next dog on our contenders list is Bayan, which is how I pronounce it. It's B-A-Y-N. So Bane? 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 Let's go with Bane. Okay, so Bane is a wolf in the Queens of Renthia series by Sarah Beth Durst. And this wolf is once again an extremely intelligent animal. And we are introduced to the wolf as this wolf is owned slash a companion to one of the teachers that the main character, Delenia, has in her schooling in the first book. And after her schooling, the dog kind of just follows her, or the wolf per se, just follows her around. And 
sort of switches ownership from the teacher to Delenia and this wolf goes with her everywhere. Uh, once again, you see an intelligent animal who can't necessarily verbally communicate, but you know there's something special about him. In the Dresden Files dog, we understood that he came from some kind of mystical origin place or and has a mystical origin story of some sort, but with this one, we never really get answers, and I've so far just finished the second book in the series, so hopefully we'll start to get more as we go along, but he actually is a pretty major character, even though he has no dialogue pieces, and even though he doesn't have his own um, viewpoint, he still has a heavy presence within the story. He is always defending Galenia, and then in the second book, he ends up defending the second queen just as well. He understands human commands to a point where he has facial expressions that sometimes make it seem as if he understands. In my personal opinion, he definitely gets exactly what's going on and he understands perfectly. And it's not just like a typical understanding command situation, but he inherently understands the human language and he's able to understand um, his various friends that he has throughout the story, such as Ven and Delenia, the future queen in the second book. Overall, I love this character. I love how he is less comedic. He's more of a serious presence, and it's not that I feel he his character is lacking due to the lack of humor, but instead it makes him this ferocious protector that it makes you just feel reassured whenever he's in the round and you just know that, okay, he's there, it's gonna be okay, we're fine. I'm really looking forward to learning more about his past and figure out what his origin is, where did he come from? We still don't have these answers. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also kind of curious in terms of would a wolf win versus mouse, I don't know. But he is, from what I gather, has typical wolf strength and typical wolf skills, so he's nothing supernatural, but he is extremely intelligent. So that is Bane from the Queens of Blood slash Queens of Renthea series. The next book I would like to talk about is a bit of a spoiler because we don't meet this character until later on. So if you guys are sensitive to hearing um, a spoiler from the second book of the Farseer trilogy, then please just skip ahead until I'm on the next book. Um, so the next character we're going to talk about is Night Eyes. Night Eyes appears in the second book in the Robin Hobbs Farseer trilogy in the Assassin's, um, not the Assassin's Quest, this is the third book, but in the second book he appears. And this character um, is unique because we are now shifting away from just super intelligent animals to animals that are not only intelligent, but also have communication. So for example, in this series, the magic system involves something called the wit. And this wit, to not try and get too descriptive, is basically an ability for certain human beings to mentally bond with animals. For example, the, uh, one of the characters will say will not say who bonds with this wolf whose name is night eyes and this wolf is starts off as a pup but we watch this wolf grow into a full-size wolf and he's with us for quite a bit of the story this is a fan favorite and one of my personal favorites as well the reason for that is that this character is constantly trying to push our character to view the world through a more animalistic lens and adds us another perspective. So while Mouse and Bane were more of a protector, uh, companion sort of animal and beast, this is we're moving into now an animal that is not only serving that purpose, but also serves the purpose as a counselor to a certain degree or an advisor to our character. So now you're actually seeing actionable intelligence beyond their physical action. We're seeing them mentally challenge our characters that we're seeing in the book and give them new perspective, give them new lens to think through, which just make the story better because now you're having an actual animal trying to assist our character in understanding a situation, but instead of just giving us another typical human's eyes to see through, he's letting us gain the ability of seeing through an animal's eyes and seeing kind of sometimes the stupidity of the actions we take as humans. So this character was amazing. There wasn't really anything supernatural about his abilities in terms of strength, but in terms of 
what he's able to do when he's bonded with another human is pretty astounding and really cool. I'm going to avoid saying what they are specifically, so you guys can figure that out for yourselves, but Night Eyes is pretty amazing. The next book we are going to talk about today is Hounded by Kevin Hearn, which is the first book in Iron Druid's um, Chronicles. This dog in this series is the best of pretty much everything I've discussed so far, though we're not ranking it, so don't take that to heart. But this dog is amazing. His name is Oberon. He's an Irish wolfhound. And this dog is fantastic for multiple reasons. Number one, he can communicate with our main character. How? Through druid magic, which is pretty cool and not a spoiler since you figure out pretty much immediately that that's the case. And this dog is also super old because he, or he's lived past his normal traditional dog lifespan because of certain magics. And due to that, he's gained this kind of unique perspective and a unique understanding of time since, you know, he is a dog still and he's just a normal dog. He's just been blessed with the ability to speak because he's been trained how to speak through magic given to him by his owner. And in addition to that, he has gained certain, um, a certain cultural knowledge which is absolutely hilarious so what he doesn't have in strength and and in terms of like supernatural strength or in terms of supernatural skills he makes up for it with his comedy and his intense and really deep understanding of our culture as humans and he is probably the best friend you can have he is our main characters best friend and he's with him through all of his journeys and he's always giving sass and he's absolutely obsessed with food and seeing their relationship the main character and Oberon's is just beautiful as you're seeing them work together and you're seeing how they've built off of each other and how their own personalities have formed around each other they truly are a man's best friend in this book Oberon even has his own little tiny short stories which you can see by Kevin Hearn Oberon even solves his own mysteries Oberon is a fantastic character. If you're looking for cultural references, if you're looking for comedy, humor, and a deep, deep want and desire to learn more about specific characters from history, go no farther than Oberon. He indeed he forces his owner to give him baths and tell him stories about figures such as Genghis Khan, and then he in imitates Genghis Khan for the foreseeable week until another bath time arrives. Like Oberon is just the best dog you can have. Fantastic character. Now, I've introduced to you guys four dogs. We have Oberon from the Iron Druid Chronicles. We have Bane from the Queens of Renthia series. We have Night Eyes from the Farseer trilogy. And we have Mouse from the Dresden Files. So now, if we are to look at this list of four dogs and have to decide based off strength or intelligence or comedic factor, it would be incredibly difficult. Now, if we combine these factors, it becomes all of a sudden much simpler to figure out who our top dog is in fantasy. So, I'm gonna make my argument for who I think is the bottom, and we're gonna work our ways up from there. So, in my personal opinion, the bottom dog is probably Bane from Queens of Renthia series by Sarah Beth Durst. Couple, you're crazy. Why would you choose that dog as the bottom? Well, it's quite simple because he doesn't really add much more besides for a sense of reassurance and um, a protector to characters who need him to be there and his lo intense loyalty. So while he is an amazing dog, hence why he's on this list, he's just not as good as the other three options in my personal opinion and he's also like a natural born wolf so it's not exactly the same level of companionship he has a certain level of independence in him and that just makes sense given the fact that he is a wolf so number four spot is going to be our dear friend and pal Bane from Queens of Renthia. next number three once again I'm probably gonna upset you guys which is understandable and I hope you guys are okay with that because I'm okay with that. I'm gonna put Oberon in this category. Oberon is going in number three slot. You may say, couple, why would you put Oberon in number three? You just talk so highly about him. Well, let me tell you, 
He is comedy, and that is his sole purpose. He, and especially in the beginning, the dog is there to provide a comedic outlet, and he does it extremely well, and he's absolutely hilarious, and his loyalty to our main character really makes him a great protector and a great friend, and he's absolutely fantastic, and I love the series, and I love Oberon, and his novellas, where he's the main character, are just fantastic to read, and a ton of fun. But when it comes to factoring in strength, while Oberon does have a lot of enthusiasm, which usually helps him compete against supernatural beings, he just, at the end of the day, doesn't come down to the same level. I'm placing Oberon in the number three slot. Number two is going to go to Night Eyes, because Night Eyes from the Farseer trilogy. You may say, once again, <laughs> I know, we're going to keep repeating this, but Night Eyes is number two. Why? Because he is, he has incredible strength and he, while it's not supernatural, he doesn't need it for how he protects our main character. He uses the supernatural aspects of his bond with the main character to protect him and defend him against, against crazy situations you wouldn't believe, which you need to read to find out. Night Eyes is fantastic for that one purpose. And in addition to that, he also gives us an amazing ability to question our main character and his motives and gives us another perspective to look through. And that is where he ranks above the bottom two. He actually adds more to the story because of his ability to communicate with our main character. And with that combined with his love and um, friendship with our main character, he just is a fantastic character. Even though he's a wild wolf, he's just a fantastic friend and companion to our main character in the Farseer trilogy. So, there is Night Eyes. Now, the top, I'm sure you guys guessed it, is going to Mouse. The reason why is I can't really say because it's a spoiler. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, gonna put in a spoiler warning at the bottom of the screen while I explain my reasoning. And if you don't wanna know, then you can skip forward. If you do wanna know, because you've read it or because you are just super curious, then stay with us just a little bit longer. But my reasoning for having him be the number one is because of how he's taking on the role of being the protector to Harry's daughter. Like that is just a beautiful relationship and this is just fantastic and really a gorgeous thing that happens and you really trust in Mouse and you actually can like leave her with Mouse and as a reader feel reassured that she's with someone who can protect him her, protect her, and while, yes, sometimes a child is with characters such as Michael, which are also incredibly amazing characters and super powerful, it's just nothing's quite as reassuring as having Mouse with you, in my opinion. So, that's my spoiler reason. Now, switching back into non-spoiler, um, so now, so in addition to that one reason you guys just heard, or maybe did not hear, I also think that Mouse kind of incorporates a few of the aspects of all the other um, animals. So. He is supernaturally strong, which makes him one of the strongest animal companions of the four that I listed. On top of that, he while he can't necessarily um, contribute to our main character in terms of any kind of verbal communication, the dog easily understands the situations that are going on, which is expressed by his facial expressions and how he listens to the commands so, like, so by the rules and also interprets them to what the main character Harry wants out of Mouse. But on top of all that, he also is comedic. You see it in certain instances when he's protecting Harry or when he's stopping a feud between two main characters and just how Mouse interjects himself and acts and behaves is always comedic. And unless it's usually a fight scenario, you can usually rely on Mouse to be a comedic character. With the fact that he's comedy, he's strength, and his overall um, behavior and presence in the series is such a strong one, I have to put Mouse as the number one dog slash wolf in this tier list. So there you go. Those are my four favorite animals. Uh, those are my four favorite dogs slash wolves in the fantasy world. So please comment down below and share with me where you guys think I'm wrong. Send me your own list. Send me other dogs or wolves that I missed in this listing. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. And this has been Couple. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.